Come on in. Come on in. Welcome to the reading of the last will and testament of our dearly beloved. It's a solemn occasion and um, we want to get right to it. I know that uh, you have an interest in this, so uh, let, let's get started. This is the last will and testament. Um, with the last will and testament, it, it, I don't know if you've ever been to the reading of one, but what they do is that there has to be a testator. That, that is, the person who dies and leaves stuff, right, uh, is called a testator. And then the people that receive what he leaves behind, the, the legacy that he leaves or, or the estate that he leaves, the estate, um, are called the beneficiaries. And so you, as a beneficiary, are probably very interested in, in finding out what the testator has left for you. I mean, wow, you know, who would want to know that? What if um, somebody left you the patent to a disease that could cure a disease or many diseases or all diseases, including death? Can you imagine how much that would be worth? And if you were one of the beneficiaries or the beneficiary of that, man, you would be, like they say, filthy rich, right? Well, at least rich. So, so what is it that, uh, that has been left in the will for you? The, the, the first thing that, that, um, that the testator left for, for you who are watching, who are here for the reading of this will, was uh, forgiveness. You know, some of us behave real bad, badly. Uh, some sons and daughters sometimes uh, really don't deserve much, you know. And, but you know, when there's a reading of the will, they're right there. They're 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 ready to receive their their cut, you know, or what they've got coming. And sometimes there's great fights, and you know, people get mad at the families. I mean, it uh, the um, the benefits that are left behind can really create problems. That's why some very wealthy people have um, have divided up their estate before before they they, they die, like the um, uh, Waltons of, of the Walmart family, who who would be if it was just still in in one name would be uh, the richest man in the world. But he has divided up uh, among his heirs, and they're all billionaires. So, <clears throat> and then sometimes people behave so badly that. Uh, you really don't expect to receive anything because of the way uh, that you behaved. Such was the case. Let me let me tell you about one of the beneficiaries. His name uh, was Mitsuo Fuchida. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Mitsuo Fuchida was a, was Japanese, as the name implies. He was born in Japan back in at the turn of the of last century. His grandfather was a samurai warrior. All right. So he grew up with that fighting spirit, you know, that uh, that Japanese samurai uh, spirit. And and you've heard of him. You have. And um, you remember his words. Right now, I'm going to tell you what he said. And you said, oh, that was the guy. Yeah, he is the one that on on December 7th, 1941, early in the Sunday morning, when uh, all, all the uh, Americans were sleeping in or at church or, you know, trying to get over a hangover and stuff. It was a Sunday morning in, in Hawaii, in Honolulu. And uh, he is the one that was the, uh, the leader of the uh, airplanes that attacked Pearl Harbor. And everybody was waiting for his word, for his command. And he said it. When he said what he said, it unleashed hell on earth. It unleashed World War II for us, for the United States. And so the famous words that he uttered were, Torah, Torah, Torah. And when all the aviators that were on, on, on that flight, you know, on, on that uh, uh, bombing run, when they heard the, the, the words, Torah, 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 they all swooped down into Pearl Harbor and created havoc, and like I said, started World War II for the United States, and created hell on earth 
for many, many millions and millions of people. So many people died as a real just on that day. There were something like 2,400, I think, that died. And you can go today to Pearl Harbor. They preserved one of the ships. Uh, I don't know if they can't raise it or or they decided to leave it there. I I, I don't know, I, or I don't remember. I was there one time, and uh, <clears throat> you can see the Arizona. That's the name of the ship that was um, that was sunk, and there's still oil seeping out of it. You can see it, uh, and they just left it there. But uh, over 2,400 uh, American uh, troops, uh, Navy, Marine soldiers were killed on that day. Our battleships were were were, were destroyed. Uh, I, I don't think we had any left there in the harbor. Uh, aircraft carriers. I mean, the whole fleet was in there, which is a dumb thing to do, but they were all in at one place. It was like shooting fish in a barrel. And that was uh, uh, Mitsuo Fushida. And uh, he, he took, I think it was uh, 28 or 38 bullets through his fuselage, through his airplane. Right, and it, it was all shot to pieces. But he managed to 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 return and land, and and, um, and they found that the one cable. I'm I'm not an aviator. I don't know about aviation, but there's one cable that would control the uh, the, uh, the steering, and uh, it, it was it had been shot. It was hanging by a thread. He made it back. If that thing had broken, he would have crashed into the sea, and we never would have heard of him. But he made it back. He was spared. Did God spare him? He attacked America and he hated Americans. He thought it was honorable to kill Americans. And so he went back and, and you know, continued with, with his uh, duties as a, um, uh, as an aviator for the Japanese Navy, continued bombing. And I mean, they, they, they were, they, they were merciless. Um, you can read stories and see movies about what they did in the Philippines and the other islands of the Pacific. They even came all the way to California. Did you know that? They came to California. There were bombs there in San Pedro that were, that were uh, uh, exploded from offshore uh, up in, in the Santa Barbara area. We have a dear friend uh, over in a convalescent home that's old enough to remember uh, hearing about it when he was a little boy. <clears throat> and uh, the, the ones in Santa Barbara. And he's a scientist uh, and was a scientist for JPL, a great inventor, a genius, but he remembers. And anyway, so Mitsuo Fushida, he returned back to his duties and of, uh, of killing Americans and, and, and fighting the war. Later on, a few years later, the United States mounted an attack, uh, an aerial attack, and they met over the island of Midway. It was called the Battle of Midway. There's been movies made about John Wayne, I think, made one, and, and others have made movies about the battle. And uh, what? But just before that battle, Mitsui um, uh, developed a, a, an illness and had to be hospitalized. So up in the battle, uh, so he was in the in the hospital ship, <clears throat> in the um, in, in in being treated. He couldn't fly. <clears throat> And so they, they, uh, the, the Japanese met the Americans up there and the Americans destroyed them, just destroyed them. And they sank the, um, the aircraft carriers. The Americans sank the Japanese aircraft carriers and then the Japanese uh, planes that, that were able to get away, that weren't shot down, uh, they all perished. Not a single plane made it back because they ran out of fuel out in the middle of the ocean. And Mitsui again escaped because he was, he was in the infirmary. And so, so then, uh, during that battle, he came out and, 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 you know, up on deck, and because it was all hands on deck, I mean, there was a, the, the Americans were there. And during that battle, uh, he, the Americans shot the, the ship that he was on, actually they sank it. And um, when, 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 the, when the Americans exploded a bomb uh, on that ship, then he was thrown and, uh, and uh, suffered an ankle injury. So he, he, um, he couldn't uh, uh, participate in, in action. He was sent back. He, he was supposed to be in Guam, but they sent him back, back to, uh, to Hiroshima, of all places. They sent him to Hiroshima. Meanwhile, he was supposed to be on Guam, and that is when the Americans invaded Guam 
and they destroyed everybody. That was, that was a big, 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 big battle. I think that's the one where, where, where the American flag is being raised. You've seen that picture and the statue. It's in Washington, D.C. And, and you see it many places, the Americans raising the American flag. And uh, I have a friend that, that I worked with uh, who, um, who was there. He's not one of the guys raising the flag, but he was standing uh, with that unit, unit right out of shot of the picture. Um, ah, I can't remember his name. I worked with him for years and right now his name escapes me, but he was there. And, and, and again, uh, the, the Japanese uh, high command, all the, all the officers on Guam, when they saw that they, that they lost, they, they, they totally lost that battle on Guam, the Americans invaded Guam, then the most honorable thing to do and the right thing to do for them was to uh, commit seppuku, seppuku, and which is um, uh, taking out your guts, you know, sticking yourself in the belly and letting your guts spill out, and, and that way you bleed to death and and uh, very honorable. But he missed it again. Mitsui wasn't there, and he was furious about that because he wanted to be with his with his with his team, right? That's what they do. But now he was sent to Hiroshima to prepare for, because the Americans were bombing. They were bombing over, over uh, Doolittle's Raiders, were bombing over Japan. And, and he said, what does that got to do with the Bible? Well, you listen, listen, listen. So, so uh, pay attention, because <laughs> this is important for the reading of the will. So, so Mitsui is in Hiroshima preparing for the Americans that were attacking and they know, knew that Hiroshima was a very important city from all the factories and manufacturing and, and railroads and all that that they had there. And don't you know that um, one evening he was uh, called to a staff meeting uh, at another town. So he left early and went because they were going to have a, a meeting the next day. I think it was, um, the staff meeting was on the day of August 5th. So on August the 4th of 1945, he, he went to that other town, I can't remember the name of it, to the other town to prepare for the staff meeting. And he was up in his hotel room on the 5th when he got the news of what had happened in Hiroshima, the first atomic bomb. And the town was decimated. It was leveled. It was burned to a crisp. People were burnt alive. You couldn't run away from it. it was, you've seen that famous picture of that uh, Japanese girl stripped naked by the, by, the, by the explosion. And she's running towards the camera. Actually, she's running towards the camera. A little girl, I think she was about five, five six years old, it made the cover of Time magazine. And uh, actually, she later became a Christian. I saw her uh, give her testimony at the Crystal Cathedral uh, many years ago uh, as a grown-up. And, and uh, so, so now he, 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 was, he, he missed death again, very dishonorable. And, and as he saw all this destruction in the Philippines, oh my God, the, 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 um, he didn't feel bad about killing the Americans and the Bataan Death March where, where thousands died of Americans. The, the Japanese were absolutely brutal in that war. They were absolutely brutal, which was the honorable, that was the expected thing, that samurai, and if you were, if you were a samurai and you were captured and you expected to be tortured, you expected to be mistreated and treated really bad, badly, uh, that was just the code, right? And so it, he, he wanted to participate, but he kept missing out on the action. So now he is, um, he is sent back to assess the damage at Hiroshima. And nobody knew anything about radiation. Remember, we used to set up, um, um, the United States used to set up, um, uh, what do you call it? stands, you know, for the fans and people, the generals and the soldiers and, and the public, some parts of the public were invited to watch the explosions out in the Nevada desert. And uh, so they could experiment to see if there were any effects from, from um, from uh, the, the explosions. And, and so, he, so uh, Mitsuo went back to Hiroshima to assess the damage. And, uh, and then after a while, he was called to Japan, back to Japan to be a witness. 
He had started it all. And at this point, he is feeling the guilt of World War II. All the deaths, all the suffering of his people. His people didn't care about the Americans or the other allied uh, soldiers, the, the Filipinos especially. But he was called to back to Japan. And he was one of the ones on the Missouri when Japan was forced to surrender. And all the generals came forward. Uh, I think the emperor was there. And, and MacArthur, General Douglas MacArthur, who was in charge of the war in the Pacific, um, wrote out the terms of, uh, of surrender, which were unconditional, which was absolutely devastating, embarrassing, humiliating, beyond words for this samurai warrior. And he was there to witness the, the, the Japanese sign. Not only did, did they sign away, uh, sign that they were surrendering unconditionally, totally, completely. MacArthur tore up whatever they had as, as law and wrote a brand new constitution for Japan. When he did that, he sent back word to uh, President Truman and send, said, don't send any more politicians, send missionaries. Please send mis missionaries. So Mitsuo was there. Now he's totally defeated and he was going out of his mind. I guess it would be today, it would be called PTSD. But, but I mean, this was family size. This was bad because he felt personally responsible for everything that had happened in the Pacific in World War II, the atomic bombs that were dropped, the two that were bombed on, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. He returned to his, to his village and started raising chickens. Then he was called, this time by the Americans, to come to the war, war crime tribunals, which was, what is that? That's not in the uh, samurai code. You win, you're the victor. You don't try people, see if they behaved honorably in war. And when he, he, he went back to, uh, to, uh, to Tokyo, and while he was there, there was a ship that was uh, disembarking released prisoners of war, Japanese prisoners of war, Japanese who had been prisoners um, of the Americans. And he talked to them, sure that uh, they had been mistreated. But they looked healthy, they looked fine. And they told him, no, no, they treat us okay, they treat us fine. We got fed, they housed us, they provided everything. Was, he could not understand that. He could not understand that, especially for himself, because he, he expected to be tortured and to death and, because he was, of all people, he felt the burden that he was responsible. While he was watching them, they told him about this lady, the lady's name. Remember the name. You can look it up. Peggy Covell, C-O-V-E-L-L. -L. She was a young lady who had taken care of the Japanese prisoners of war. She had cared for them, they said, like she was their sister. And he could not understand that. That, he, that, that was... It was like another universe, another uh, alternate reality. It was, it didn't make sense. But they told him, no, it's true. Then he learned that Peggy Covell's parents had been missionaries in the Philippines when the when the Japanese came through, and they they were brutal. And and they they they, they killed the her um, her parents with a sword. Samurai sword, the code of the samurai, right? Because they were preaching another religion that was not Shintoism. It was not worship to the emperor. So it was the right thing to do to kill them. But before they were killed, they requested if they could have a half hour to pray. Peggy's parents did. I don't know where Peggy was. And <clears throat> they prayed for their captors. They prayed for their executioners, and the prisoners were telling him this. He, he, this was beyond. So then, he, 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 he stumbled around, he couldn't believe this, and he met a, uh, an American missionary. 
His name was Jacob de Sasser, or de Chaser. D-E-S-H-A-Z-E-R, de Chaser. He had been one of Doolittle's raiders, the people that were dropping bombs on Japan, not the atomic bomb, but the, 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 the other bombs. Now he's a missionary to Japan, but he had been a prisoner of war. He had been shot down over China and had been a captive of the Japanese and had been tortured and horribly treated, almost died of malnutrition because they would starve the prisoners. But now he's a missionary to Japan and he gave Doolittle a Bible. I mean, not Doolittle, Mitsuo gave him a Bible. Mitsuo started reading it, and after a while, guess who he met? He met his benefactor. He met the testator of the will. He met Jesus. And he accepted Christ as his savior. He, he learned all he could about the word, became an evangelist. He ministered in the United States. He was based out of Oklahoma. He ministered all over the world. Look him up, Mitsuo uh, Fushida, F, as in Frank, Fushida. He, he, he never expected that. He didn't expect mercy. He didn't know what mercy was. He, had his, he felt this huge debt to the world. He was responsible. He owed for all these lives and all the suffering and the destruction but now he found out that in, 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 in the will, there's a section called Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12, where the benefactor says, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. He learned what mercy was. Mercy is not receiving the punishment we deserve. He read in Lamentations, chapter 3, where it says, Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. He learned what mercy was. His benefactor gave him mercy. His benefactor had died. To be a, to be a testator, you have to die. Then he learned what grace is. Grace is receiving, being given more than you deserve. He expected disgrace. He found grace. He read in John chapter 1, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, full of grace and of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. That expression, grace for grace, it's kind of uh, like describing the waves at, 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 uh, on the beach. You know, there's a, a wave, and, and, you, and there's another wave, and there's another wave, and there's another wave, and, and, and no matter how long you stand there, the waves keep coming in. And some of them are big, some of them are small, but some of them are big, but they never stop. That's what it says, grace for grace, grace for grace. It's like a continuing thing, receiving more than we deserve. Oh my God. He, re he read in Ephesians, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love, he was loved with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, I thought the testator had to die. No, we were the ones that were dead. <laughs> he then made us alive. Together with Christ, by grace we have been saved, been made alive. And we've been raised up, made up alive, made, made, made alive in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves, not a thing you have done. It is the gift, a gift, a gift. He expected to be forgotten, but he read, I am always with, with you, even to the end of the age. He expected to be ridiculed as a prisoner of war, but he was celebrated. 
He read in Psalms 45, with gladness and rejoicing they will, shall be brought. They shall enter the king's palace. Enter the king's palace, he said. He read in Isaiah, where God himself says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with a grope of righteousness. He expected to be made a servant, a slave. But he read where Jesus said in John 15, I will no longer call you servants. I have called you friends, friends of Jesus. Oh my goodness. He, this, this estate that has been left to the beneficiaries is unbelievable. He expected to be attacked. He found out he has an advocate before the Father. For there is only one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ, Jesus himself, is your attorney. He expected to be disowned. But he read in Romans where it says the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. <laughs> and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. He expected eternal death. But he read where if you eat of the tree of life, which is in the, you will eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise. He read that he would not be hurt by the second death. What is the second death? Well, you die. Everybody, uh, shh, don't tell anybody, but everybody has to die. Turn to your neighbor, tell him you're going to die. Turn to your other neighbor, tell him you're going to die too. So don't laugh. We're all going to die. Look in the mirror and tell that guy, you're going to die. Ooh. But after you die, later there will be a resurrection. Actually, there are two resurrections. The first resurrection is for the beneficiaries of the will. It's called the rapture of the church. And those beneficiaries are raptured. They're caught up. Their bodies are brought up out of the graves and they're caught up in the air and they meet Christ and they go back to live with, with Jesus forever and ever. We'll read about the ones, about the other ones. He says, I will, he expected to be just stripped of all his, his medals and his authority. Uh, he was a captain. He expected that those bars to come off. But he read where it says, I will give you power over the nations. He expected to have to bow and sit, uh, you know, groveling at the, at the feet of, of maybe J Douglas MacArthur or somebody like that. But he read where it says, where Jesus himself says, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the King of Glory says, I will grant you to sit with me on my throne, on my throne. So who is this testator? The Son of Man. It's God himself. Jesus. God in the flesh. He came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many so he could buy this estate. Now, you're wondering, am I a beneficiary? That's a good question. That is the question of the ages. Because I already told you who is a beneficiary. You accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. You become a child of God. You're in the will. It's the, the, there's a list of those that are in the will. It's called the Book of Life. That's all the beneficiaries. It could be titled uh, List of Beneficiaries. The Book of Life could be titled List of Beneficiaries. Now, who is not? Who is not a beneficiary? I'm glad you asked. Because you need to know this. And you need to tell somebody that they need to know this. Then I saw a great white throne. This is Revelation chapter 20. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on, on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fell, fled away. Can you imagine heaven and earth just fleeing from, ooh, something bad is about to happen. Mm, 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 mm. And there was found no place for them. Maybe that's why we have to have a new heaven and a new earth. And I saw the dead, oh, oh, there it is, dead, small and great, that means the nobodies and the somebodies, standing before God, and books were opened. Is that the book of life? Is that the list of beneficiaries? I don't think so. 
and another book was opened. Ah, which one's that? Which is the book of life. That's the list of beneficiaries. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Well, that's not a good thing. Ooh. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead who were in them. So where, what happens when you die? Well, your soul, if you're a believer, you're, you're in the will, your, your name is in the list of beneficiaries called the Book of Life. Immediately, the Bible says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So that's where you are. Your body will be resurrected at the, sec at the uh, rapture. But if you had never accepted Christ as your Savior and you didn't live for Christ, guess where you go? You go to hell. Now, hell has two compartments. There's the place of death, which is torture. You read that in, it's a bad place. You read that in, in the story of uh, the rich man and Lazarus, right? Rich man dies and he, he, he goes down into, into this place where he's in torment. He can feel the flames. And the worst thing, there's an expression that says, and the worm never dies. What is that? That's, the, that's the, um, an expression that means you can't stop remembering. And the tormented by demons who will laugh at you. Ha, 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 ha. You had your chance. You heard that preacher. You heard him. And you didn't. <laughs> now we got you. Now we got you. And that's your place of, 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 of waiting. Until now. And they were judged each according to his works. Death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. That's another place. That's the really bad place. Because even the demons didn't want to go there. Remember when, when, when uh, I think it's in Mark chapter 5. I may be wrong. The, the demon, yeah, chapter 5. Uh, where where the, the, the uh, Gadarene, the man from Gadar Gadara uh, is, uh, is delivered from legions of, uh, of demons. And they ask, please don't send us <laughs> to, to the abyss, <laughs> to that dark place. Let us go into the pigs. So that even they didn't, even the demons don't want to go there. Well, they will be there. The death in Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. There's a second death. So that was the second resurrection when you stand before the great white throne. And anyone, this is how you find out that you're not a beneficiary. Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Well, so as we read the will, the question is, Will you be a beneficiary or will you not be a beneficiary of the mercy and the grace and the forgiveness and eternal life in Jesus Christ? That is the question. You need to answer it. Because you have no you have no no guarantee. You may say later and not wake up tomorrow. Just not wake up. You won't wake up until that second resurrection. That, that's the second death. Or tomorrow you could catch something and get sick and die. Or anything can happen to you. You have no, you have no guarantee. The innocent bystanders are shot all the time. Little children. It's a bad place we live in. Hurry, Jesus, hurry. So I'm inviting you right now to become a beneficiary of the grace, the mercy, the forgiveness, and the eternal life. Will you accept? Or will you be left out of the will when it is read? Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you touch hearts everywhere around the world and that people would just come to you and say, Lord, I want to be a beneficiary. Forgive me. I never did anything like Mitsuo uh, Fushida, but it's just as bad. It's, it will keep me out of heaven. And Lord, I pray right now, your forgiveness, your mercy, cleanse me, forgive me of my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I am now a child of God. I am now a beneficiary of your grace and your mercy. I believe this in my heart and I confess it with my mouth. 
Amen. Amen. Tell somebody. Tell somebody right now. And then go out and tell others. You want to share in this video. It doesn't matter my name or anything, but share it with somebody. And write to me. If there are in comments, write to me and tell me that you accepted Christ. Please tell me that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. And if you're already a beneficiary, praise God. Let me know. I want to know. I want to know. I want to hear from you. All right? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Mm, 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 mm.